Hey there, it's Keith. Um, listen, I wanted to share something with you. God did some really cool stuff yesterday. Uh, our our house church met together with the motel church, which we do the first Sunday of every month. And we looked at uh, this passage, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And it was so good. Uh, I wanted to share it with you guys, okay? So um, I'm just going to read it here at the beginning. It says, uh, Paul says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So one thing right off the bat I have to say is that that's an interesting correction, I think, to something that uh, a lot of times Christians have gotten have misunderstood. A lot of times we'll talk about the gospel by saying, you know, that we want people to invite Jesus into their life. And we'll say, you know, have you asked Jesus into your life? Um, and in some ways that's true. But here what Paul is saying is slightly different. Paul is actually saying that Christ invites us into his life. And if you think about it, I think that's actually more accurate and more important. Because here's why. I think a lot of times when Christians say, I've invited Jesus into my life, what they, what they mean is that my life is like, this airplane that I'm flying and I'm the pilot and, uh, and Hey Jesus, I'll let you come in. You can sit here next to me in the co-pilot seat. And so, you know, Hey, Jesus is in my life. He's on my airplane, but I'm the one flying the airplane and, and Jesus, thank you for joining me. It's really cool to have you here. Uh, you know, maybe while I'm flying the plane here, could you just go back there and maybe get us some snacks or something? I mean, that's kind of the way, uh, at least I'll be honest with you, the way I thought about my relationship with Jesus when I first came to Christ, uh, I was the pilot. It was my airplane, and Jesus was just a co-pilot. That's not what Paul says here. That's not what the New Testament teaches at all. What Paul is saying here, if I could just summarize for you, is this. Your plane crashed. You don't have an airplane anymore. Your plane crashed, and you are dead. Now, Jesus has an awesome airplane, and he's the pilot, and he's inviting you to come inside his airplane. And when you come inside his airplane, you're going to experience the best you know, life and the best, it's going to be just the best possible experience to fly on Jesus Airlines, okay? And that's different. You see, I mean, it's like, when I say it that way, do you see the difference? The difference between it's my airplane, I'm flying it, and Jesus is just, you know, sitting there, uh, but I'm in control, versus my plane crashed and I'm dead. I don't have any airplane, uh, but Jesus has the airplane and he's the one flying it and he invites me into him, into his life, right? So I'm on his airplane and he's flying it, uh, makes a big difference, right? And um, this idea, that the thing about saying, you know, when you died, he says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And your life, and so when Christ who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Um, you know, this is the thing about death, that what happens to dead things when they come into contact with Jesus? They resurrect, they come back to life. Anything that is dead that comes into contact with Jesus resurrects. It, it, it leaps into life, right? And that's who we are. And so later on here, uh, the next verse is here, Paul gives us a list of things. He, he tells us then not to practice. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, uh, which is idolatry, uh, etc. He says, you used to walk in these ways and in the life you once lived, but now rid yourselves of all such things as these. And here's another list. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips, don't lie to each other, etc. And so, again, I think the mistake I've made and we can often make in our Christian life is to look at a list like that and think that what I have to do to be a Christian is to, to stop doing those bad things. So my all my energy and all my effort is towards not doing bad things. That's not what Paul means to say at all. Again, what, is it, he's, what does Paul say at the beginning? You died. You're dead. Dead people don't do those things. You used to do those things before, but now you're dead. And so what are you doing now? Well, you're, it's not that you're not doing those things. You now have the resurrection life of Christ at work in you. And because of that, you can't do those things. Those things are impossible, right? Um, because you are now, you have a new nature, okay? And here's one of the examples I want to give about that. Nobody goes in, no one ever walks into a dark room and then turns off the darkness. 
You don't turn off the darkness. We can't turn off the darkness. And so that's what we're doing when we're trying to not, um, you know, have anger or have filthy language or, or lust or uh, those things. That is us trying, our action in that case would be us trying to turn off our darkness. It's impossible. No, you walk into a dark room and what do you do? You flick on the light. And once the light appears, pfft, the darkness is gone. And that's the image of what we need to experience when we're in Christ. We, have, we, have, we died. We're now alive in Christ because we've come into contact with him as dead things. We are now resurrected. We have the resurrected life of Christ at work in us and alive in us. We can't do those things anymore, right? We don't need to focus on not doing things because that will be trying to turn off the darkness. No, instead we just focus on being in the light. And so, you know, elsewhere, Paul gives us those examples. In Galatians 5.22, he says, you know, uh, we should have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and forgiveness and mercy and gentleness and self-control. In other words, what our action is, is not turning off darkness. It's, it's turning on light. So our actions are to practice those things. And, and as, all, as he also says in Philippians 4.8, uh, to think on things that are good and noble and praiseworthy, right? And those are the things we do. But we do them and we're empowered to do them now. We have the power to do those things now where we didn't before. We have that power now because of the life of Christ that is at work in us night and day. Okay? Um, so anyway, isn't that, I hope that's encouraging to you. It really encouraged me. And we had an amazing conversation afterwards uh, just at our table sitting there together about what does that mean then to walk into a new nature, to live out of a new nature uh, that Christ has given to us. Don't try to turn off the darkness. Just turn on the light and live in the light and walk in the light and celebrate the fact that you're in the, you're in the light and you're not in the darkness anymore. Anyway, I hope that blesses you. Share it with somebody. Uh, I'd be so thrilled if you would share this video with someone in your life that you think needs that kind of encouragement uh, in their life. I think it'll help them. And thank you for listening and um, we'll talk again soon. God bless. Bye-bye.